Good morning and a very warm welcome to you as we gather together for worship. We begin as we turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we are thankful for your grace and your love. We're reminded today of how much you love us. We're reminded again that it was love that drove your son to the cross. Out of love, he sacrificed himself for each of us. And so, Lord, we thank you for your love, which draws us to a place of worshipping you, acknowledging you as our God and our Saviour. And so, as we offer ourselves in this time of worship, we pray, Lord, through our singing and our listening and our being, that your Spirit would inspire our hearts and open our minds, that you would fill us with your message and your challenge, and that we would respond in a way that is appropriate to the growth of our lives and our relationships with you and with others. So be honoured as we offered ourselves to you. Be blessed as we worship you this morning. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So I invite you to sing along as we sing together a song expressing the love of Christ and the love of God for us. How deep is the Father's love?
Reading today is from Leviticus chapter 19 and reading from verses 1 to 18. The Laws of Holiness and Justice The Lord told Moses to say to the community of Israel, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect your mother and your father and must keep the Sabbath as I have commanded. I am the Lord your God. Do not abandon me and worship idols. Do not make gods of metal and worship them. I am the Lord your God. When you kill an animal for fellowship offering, keep the regulations that I have given you, and I will accept the offering. The meat must be eaten on the day the animal is killed, or on the next day. Any meat left on the third day must be burned, because it is ritually unclean, and if anyone eats it, I will not accept the offering. Any who eat it and will be guilty of treating as ordinary what is dedicated to me, and they will no longer be considered my people. When you harvest your fields, do not cut the grain at the edges of the fields, and do not go back and cut the heads of grain that were left. Do not go back through your vineyard to gather the grapes that were missed, or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor people and the foreigners. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal or cheat or lie. Do not make promise in my name if you do not intend to keep it. That brings disgrace on my name. I am the Lord your God. Do not rob or take advantage of anyone. Do not hold back the wages of someone that you have hired, not even for one night. Do not curse the deaf or put something in front of the blind so as to make them stumble over it. Obey me. I am the Lord your God. Be honest and just when you make decisions in legal cases. Do not show favoritism to the poor or fear the rich. Do not spread lies about anyone. And when someone is on trial for his life, speak out if your testimony can help him. I am the Lord. Do not bear a grudge against others, but settle your differences with them, so that you will not commit a sin because of them. Do not take revenge on others or continue to hate them, but love your neighbours as you love yourself. I am the Lord. Reading from John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. And now I give you the new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. This is the word of the Lord.
As we continue our theme in the marks of discipleship, just want to remind you of the last two weeks that we've traveled. Firstly, we looked at the first principle, the following principle, where we were reminded again that to be a disciple of Jesus means we need to follow him. And then last week, the principle of discipleship was the continuance principle, that we need to continue in the word of God and the word of God needs to continue within us. Today, we pick up on the third principle of discipleship, and it's entitled the love principle. Let's pray. Lord, again, we would ask that through your scriptures and through your word, you would touch our hearts and our lives. Help us, Lord, to listen. Help us to respond with the love that comes from you. In your grace, we pray. Amen. He was late for work. He'd overslept, slept through the alarm, spilled his coffee while he was having breakfast and had to change his shirt. As he was leaving home, the dog ran out of the door and he had to go and catch him again and get him inside. And then he remembered that he'd forgotten a document on his desk. He returned, fetched it. He was in a rush. He was running to catch the train. It was just about to leave, just started moving as he ran across the platform and jumped onto the train. But oops, in his rush, he knocked over a young schoolboy who was carrying a jigsaw puzzle on a tray. The tray fell onto the platform and the jigsaw puzzle shattered. But he was late for work. He looked back and he saw tears in the little boy's eyes as he began to bend down and pick up the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. But he was late. What could he do? What made him do it? He jumped off the train. He doesn't know why. But he walked back to the boy, bent down next to him and began to help him pick up the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. The boy looked at him through his tear-filled eyes and he said, Excuse me, sir, are you Jesus? A true disciple of Jesus is one who loves with the love of Jesus. John's whole gospel is a gospel that points us towards the principle of love. Love is nothing new in the commandments that are given to us even through the Old Testament. In Leviticus chapter 19, which was read for us earlier, we see that there's the commandments that are embedded in love. Every commandment demands love, where God says you will worship God exclusively means we need to love God exclusively. When we harvest our fields or when they harvested their fields to leave something for others, leave the fringes for the poor. Honesty and integrity needs to be part of our word and our conduct in our love for others. But when we move into the New Testament, there's something that changes in the New Testament commandment that was read for us from John. The depth of love increases exponentially. Verse 34, as I have loved you, so you must love one another, is what Jesus said. And so we need to ask the question, how did Jesus love? Firstly, Jesus loved with a selfless love. One of the best examples of Jesus' selfless love is when Jesus bent down and washed the disciples' feet in John chapter 13. The Lord, the teacher, the rabbi takes on the role of a servant. The role's not what's so important. What is important is what he does. He then does what a servant does. He serves his disciples. To have that kind of love that Christ had, we need to think of serving others selflessly. Another good example that we get from Scripture is from the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10. To have love, to have the love of Christ, we need to humble ourselves and to love others in their need. We need to look out for their needs. And when we spot the need, 
to respond to that. Often it will mean acting very differently from the way that the world expects us to act and very differently in the way that the world requires us to act. Probably most importantly is that we need to love others for the sake of loving. In other words, we love for nothing in return. We love selflessly. We love not for what we can get out of it, but for what we can put into it. And that brings us to the second issue of love. Jesus loved with a forgiving love. Jesus on the cross reminds us with those words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Jesus is the forgiving master. Jesus deals with Peter after he's denied him. And three times Jesus says to him, in his forgiveness, if you love me, you will feed my sheep. To have the love of Christ, we need to be willing to forgive. Forgive often, no. Forgive all the time. Scripture reminds us, of the condition in Matthew chapter 18. If we do not forgive others, then we ourselves will not be forgiven. Thirdly, Jesus loved with a sacrificial love. Jesus sacrificed everything for us because he loves us. He sacrificed eternity for mortality. He sacrificed divinity for humanity. He gave up heaven to come to earth. To have the love of Christ is to be willing to sacrifice. As one other author correctly wrote, it is impossible to truly love without sacrifice. Parents sacrifice for children. Soulmates sacrifice for each other. Christians need to sacrifice for others and for each other. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 reminds us, so then as often as we have the chance we should do good to everyone and especially to those who belong to our family in the faith. We are to sacrifice for those around us. John's love principle challenges us to love in the way that Jesus loved with a selfless, forgiving, sacrificial love. Oswald Saunders wrote, The supreme evidence of discipleship, the authentic badge of discipleship, is genuine love. Let's sing together that hymn that we know so well, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
May we love with the love of Christ, a selfless love, a forgiving love, and a sacrificial love. I leave you with this blessing as we go into the week that lies ahead. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Amen.